Hi everybody, I'm Rainy, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the drum set, my drum set in particular, because I'm in my house today, but um, I'll talk a little bit about all the basics that you'll find on a regular drum set, how to adjust those things to make them work for you, what you need when you're just starting out, what you might not need when you're just starting out, and even some things that as you play a little more and get better and better, what you might want to use in that situation. So there's a lot that could be said. I could make an entire hour long video just talking about drumsticks. I'm not going to do that. I will talk a little bit about different kinds of sticks and different kinds of maybe symbols that you can use, but I'm not going too in depth into that. My plan today is just to give you an idea of what the heck is going on at a drum set and also talk a little bit about what to do if you don't have a drum set that you can use. So let's say that you want to start playing drums, but you, you don't have a drum set. Maybe you don't have space for it. Maybe you don't have the finances for it right now. Maybe you're just not sure if you want to buy a drum set or you have no one else's you can borrow, things like that. Um, there's absolutely still ways to get started and to learn basics about drums and to start playing without having a drum set in your space. Um, so this video today is going to have a lot of information. I'm going to talk a lot about stuff and you will not remember everything, but that's okay. Um, after watching this video once, you'll probably remember a few of the basics, but the good part is that it's a video so you can go back later and remember those things that you might have forgotten and I'm able to put a lot of information in here that you'll be able to save and hang on to and come back to later. So first, um, I might, as I stand up, disappear a little bit from the video. I'm sorry if my head disappears, but I had to put my iPad where I put it. So the real basics of a drum set are the drums. As you can see, there's a really big one on the bottom. There is one up here. Sometimes you'll see two up here or more. You might see eight up there, depending on what's going on. There's this one over here, which you probably can't see quite as well. I'll pick it up. And there is this one over here, okay, which is kind of special and different, and I'll talk specifically about that one later. And then I've got all these other crazy things going on. I've got symbols to hit. Um, I happen to have some extra little toys on here, which I'll talk about a little bit. But let's get down to just the names of the drums, okay? So this big one sounds like this. Is the bass drum. You could also call it a kick drum. That's not wrong. A lot of people will call it a kick drum. I would say nine times out of ten people will call it a bass drum, so you'll probably hear that more often, but kick drum is completely fine too. Um, these other big drums, so the other ones that make kind of kind of similar sounds. Alright, there's the bass drum. Here's this guy up here. These are the toms, just like Tom and Jerry, T-O-M. So we call them different things by where they are on the drum set. So this one up here is usually called a rack tom. Why a rack tom? Well, sometimes they are held up by different pieces of hardware, so different metal things, and sometimes they're on a really big thing called a rack. Even when they're not, we still call them rack toms. I don't know, it's just what they are. So, like I said, I have one up here. Usually, no, not usually, sometimes you might see two, and that's very, very common. So, you might see someone playing pop, 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 pop. I don't have to, in fact, I'll explain this later, but I don't even always use any rack toms. It's just my style. I'll, don't worry, I'll tell you all about that. 
This one down here is a floor tom. You can remember that it's called a floor tom because it's on the floor. So while I have this rack tom held up by this little mount right here, so this crazy metal thing, the floor tom has legs and you can make those legs higher or lower depending on how high up you want your drum. Okay, so floor tom on the floor. To review, rack tom, floor tom, bass drum or kick drum, not a tom, just a drum. Now this one, I'm gonna bring this over to you. This is a snare drum, okay? This is, I think, the coolest drum on the drum set. And even if you um, don't get a whole drum set right away when you decide that you wanna get something, and you just get a snare drum, that is still awesome because you can do a lot with a snare drum and practice with it. But let me show you what's going on here. All right, so the reason that we call this a snare drum is because on the bottom we have these wires called snare wires. So these are the snares, snare wires, okay? This little lever on the side opens and closes and when it's closed or up, we say the snares are up, we could say they're on, like they're turned on. It sounds like that. My snare drum sounds pretty good right now because I had a friend who's really, really good at tuning snare drums tune it for me. So always good to have friends. I'm okay at tuning them, but tuning just means make them sound the way you want to by turning these little um, tension rods. We'll go over that as well, but don't worry. Um, but yeah, my friend is really, really good at it, so I had him do it. But um, I think it sounds real nice right now. When this lever is off or down or open, you could say the snares are open. Doesn't really matter as long as you know what you're talking about. It sounds like this. Very different, right? It almost sounds kind of like a tom, but like a really high pitched tom. Snares on, snares off. So the reason that you are able to do that is um, so you have more sounds. You might want to play with the snares on, you might want to play with them off. Makes kind of a cool sound. When they're off, it's very, very echoey, very big. Um, you might notice that if you've seen other snare drums, you may notice that mine looks a little bit different. I have a wooden part around the outside, so this is called the hoop. This round part here that goes on and it comes off the drum if you want it to. This is the hoop. We also might call it um, the rim when you're hitting it like this. So you're hitting the rim. Okay, that's the rim, but the rim is part of the hoop. So just like a hoop earring, right? Mine is wood. You may have seen that most or most of the ones you've seen are metal. Metal's a little bit more common. I just recently put wood hoops on because they make a different sound and I really like the very loud very thick sound that they make. So that's a preference, but you will notice a lot of snare drums that look different. I actually have a couple different snare drums and this is the only one that I have wood hoops on right now. So snare drum, snare wires, snares open or down or off. Sorry, people say all different things. Snares up or on, I could say snares closed or lever closed as well, okay? And this little lever here, not the most important thing. It's usually called a throw or a throw off. Okay, so you hit the throw, open the snares up. But if you call it the lever, that's okay. Everyone's gonna know what you're talking about. Okay, so let me put this back. So those are the most typical things you're gonna see on any drum set. Like I said, um, sometimes you'll see different numbers of rack toms, etc. One thing that I will show you is that I actually have two floor toms right now. Right? I know. Really loud. Um, the reason I have that is because I like to be able to play like this, and I like to be able to hit both of them at the same time. You know, not exactly like that, but put into a song. Um, sometimes people have two floor toms and they're both over here, so they play like this. There's so many different things you can do, it is crazy. But 
let's not worry about all the different combinations right now. Let's just look at the symbols, okay? Also, the reason that I have shorts on my snare drum is because the snare drum can get very, very loud. And I teach lessons right now through FaceTime. And I wanted to make sure that the microphone wasn't picking up too much snare drum because that could be really annoying. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the symbols. You can have, once again, a million symbols. You can have one symbol, you can have two symbols. Whatever you need to make the noise you wanna make is correct. All right, but I'm going to show you the most basic symbols. The most basic symbols that you'll see on a drum set are a ride symbol, which is usually big. It's actually usually bigger than this. There are holes in this symbol. That's not normal. I will explain why I have holes in my symbol in a minute. But a ride symbol, okay? You think about if you've listened to somebody playing jazz or not even jazz, but maybe just a lot of rock and roll, they ride on this symbol, right? You play this one and it's kind of like you're riding a horse and it's a go, go, go symbol. So I don't know, I try to help people remember that by thinking like you're riding a horse and you're hitting it really hard and it's over on your side. Okay, this is my crash symbol. A little smaller than the ride symbol. Again, there are holes in it, I will explain. I did not poke the holes myself, don't worry mom. Okay, so my crash symbol if you only have one crash symbol, which is totally common and totally cool, obviously I'm only using one right now, usually it will be up here, okay? So somewhere on, because I'm right-handed and I have my drum set up this way on my left side. So my ride symbol's over here to my right hand and my crash symbol's up here. And that's the symbol I'm just gonna crash on. I'm playing my song, I wanna hit something once, I'm probably gonna hit my crash symbol, right? I can hit my ride symbol too, but that's not its normal job. Okay, so these over here, I know you probably can't see them perfectly yet, and I'm going to bring the iPad over here in a moment, um, or soon. But these are my hi-hats, okay? So they go up and down when I move my foot, and I'm going to show you how you control that in a moment. But these are the symbols that I use most on my drums, okay? And that I think most rock players use the most. I, at the moment, I cannot think, I know a lot of drummers, I cannot think of any drummers who don't have hi-hats on their drum set. I can think of some who don't have a ride cymbal. I can think of some who maybe if they play really quiet music, like with an acoustic guitar or a singer like that, maybe they don't have a crash cymbal. I cannot think of anyone who doesn't have hi-hats. So my hi-hats job is basically to keep me going. It's, it's what I'm hitting with my right hand. Don't worry about the playing details right now. That's not what I'm doing in this video, but I just want you to hear what it sounds like. probably sounds really familiar, right? If you listen to like most rock songs, you're gonna hear a hi-hat. So one thing I did mention that we'll talk about more in one of the playing technique videos. Again, I could make a whole hour long video about hi-hats, but I'm not doing that right now. But a big thing to know about hi-hats is that you can make different sounds with them because they open. I sometimes call them the cookie monster symbols, if that helps somebody remember them, because they open like a cookie monster mouth or like a Pac-Man mouth. Okay, so when I lift my foot up, they sound different. So listen to the difference between an open and closed hi-hat. See how I'm opening them there? And they sound very crashy and loud. That's something I can do with my hi-hat. And I will, like I said, show you how that works shortly. All right, so again, those are the basics. Bass drum rack tom, floor tom, snare drum, Rainey's other floor tom, ride cymbal, crash cymbal, hi-hats, all right? Um, some other just really basic things you're gonna need to know about your setup is pieces of hardware. Now, oh, hardware. Hardware can be a pain. There's a lot of little parts you can lose, but I'm gonna show you some tricks to help you not lose parts. 
Um, and sometimes they're really heavy and sometimes they're not and sometimes they're tall and sometimes they're short but all that matters is that you have something to put your symbols on and pieces that hold your drums together so hardware is basically anything metal on your drum set there's probably some things that are hardware that aren't metal but most of it's metal so for example this piece right here that holds my rack tom on this is a piece of hardware it's a mount it mounts the rack tom this is a cymbal stand it holds my cymbal up. This is a straight stand, so it's straight up and down. You don't really need to remember those specifics right now. You can just say, hey, I need one that's straight up and down. Okay, this is a boom stand, kaboom. If it falls over, it says kaboom. They actually, they all say kaboom. But um, see how it's bent like that? Hopefully you can see that okay. It's a boom stand because it's like a boom microphone that I can lean over any which way I need it, okay? So there's some of those basics. Uh, what other hardware is important? The hi-hat stand, I will show you up close. It is very special hardware because it's a little, there's some things you need to know about it, okay? Um, the thing that's holding my snare drum up, I'm going to hold it up so you can see it. This is a special kind of stand. It is a snare stand. They kind of, they don't all look exactly the same, but there's going to be the little legs on the bottom. These little wing nuts. Oh, another word, wing nut, I know. All the stuff you turn to loosen these parts. And this top part is called the basket. So the snare basket. Mine is open very, very, very wide because I have a big snare drum. But if I had a smaller snare drum, I could make it smaller. Whoa. Okay, so you can make it smaller and you adjust this little thing to make it stay up. Don't worry too much about that right now. If you get a drum set, um, someone in the shop you get it from, hopefully you buy it in person, can help you figure those things out because it's going to be a lot easier in person. But basically, almost everything's adjustable. Okay? Get this out of my way. Um, some other, a couple more really basic things you're going to need on a drum set. Assuming you have kind of a typical setup here, you're going to need a drum throne, okay? You can call it a drum seat, that's cool. Call it your whatever, call it your grand chariot without wheels. But this is a drum throne. I'm going to bring it over. Mine is very heavy, but it's good to have a heavy one because then it's not going to fall over. Not that the light ones are gonna fall over automatically, but you know. All right, so drum throne, usually this top part, the actual seat comes off. It should. So I would just turn this little wing nut. Wing nut here, turn it, pull off the top. If I was going to carry this in my car or something, I wanna remove this part. And these legs, which just like any cymbal stand, usually there's a wing nut, okay, that you can loosen and you put the legs in. Um, tip about wing nuts, I told you I was going to help you not lose things, okay? Generally, when you loosen this to put the legs in, please re-tighten them. Don't tighten them so tight that you can't turn them or that you're damaging something, but just, just please tighten them a little bit. Because if you don't, they're going to fall out. And when they fall out, they're in your friend's car, or they're, like, on the beach, or they're in the basement. Oh, they go everywhere. And it's really a bummer when you have to buy more, okay? So, anyway, wing nut, legs, tighten. Um, on my throne, I feel like this is a very critical thing to know, my throne goes up and down by spinning this part, okay? So I'm gonna loosen this little wing nut and I'm gonna spin the top and it will go up and down. Very simple. There are other drum thrones, usually usually kind of the, some of the cheaper ones. I know I did get myself kind of a nice seat here. Some of the cheaper ones have a little peg that you have to stick in through different holes so you only have certain choices of where to put the seat for the height. So maybe you have two inches, four inches, six inches, 
The nice thing about the ones that spin is that you can get them really precise to exactly where you want them to go. You can get them really low or really high and you don't have that kind of limited option as to where to put your seat. So I know that's a little like abstract without being able to show you the other kind, but I just don't have the other kind right now. Some seats also, they're also very cool, is they're hydraulic. So there's like, um, or are they hydraulic or pneumatic? I don't know, whatever. There's a little lever, like, you know, office chairs, there's a little lever underneath. You pull it up and your whole body goes up or down. That is fancy stuff. I do not have a drum seat like that, a drum throne, but I am very happy that I have my spinny one. So the last, I think, super critical thing on a drum set is a bass drum pedal or a kick drum pedal. Because without it, you can't hit the bass drum. I'm going to bring mine over and show you. If I can, if I can remove it, that is. <clears throat> All right, so I'm actually gonna show you. I have, I have a few different pedals. <laughs> ha, ha of course I do. And I'm gonna show you um, how they're different. You don't need to know all sorts of fancy things about your pedal just to use it. But here's the one I like the most, okay? I'm not a salesperson, but this happens to be a Tama Speed Cobra. I'm just telling you so you can look it up online if you wanna see a different picture of it. Um, I like this pedal. So first of all, this, it attaches to your bass drum, okay? So on the other side of my drum, this hoop, Okay, we talked about the hoop around the snare drum. It's that round wooden part. These are all hoops on any of your drums. The round part that goes on is a hoop, okay? So on the front of my, the part of the bass drum that I hit, this attaches to it. So there's this little space here and I slide it onto the bottom of the bass drum and then I tighten it. So here's the bottom of my hoop and I stick it on there. Again, that's something that hopefully someone can show you in person. It makes it even easier. Um, but I would just spin this little thing right here, which hopefully you can see, and it would tighten like a little cookie monster again onto my bass drum hoop. This whole part right here, it's called the foot plate or the footboard. You don't need to know that. Don't worry about it. It's the place where you put your foot, but I'm just gonna call it the foot plate because that's what I'm used to. Um, I like this bass drum pedal because it has a very, very long foot plate here. So I can fit, if I'm wearing sneakers, I can fit my whole foot on there and I don't feel cramped or anything. I can just hit this whole big thing, okay? So really all you need to know about a bass drum pedal in general is that there's the place where you put your foot and there's this beater. So this is always called, called a bass drum beater. There are probably a thousand different types. Some of them have rubber here. You can see this one has felt on the end. So this is actually a wooden bass drum beater. It's um, it's a little bit heavy, so it's very loud and it has felt on the end. That's just going to change how it sounds. You don't need to fret about this at first. If you're just getting a bass drum pedal, get something that will work for you um, or that you can afford if you're starting, starting easy with some of the drum gear. Um, but eventually you might want to choose between felt or rubber. This is again, just so you know, most of the time you'll see a chain here. Okay, so this is called a chain drive pedal. That just means that the pedal um, foot plate is connected to the beater pretty much by a chain, okay? I also have this direct drive pedal, so see how there's no chain there? Again, I can make an hour long video about bass drum pedals, I'm not going to, but this right here, um, it's a piece of metal that connects the beater directly to the foot plate. They're more accurate sometimes, so that means once you get really fast and maybe you're playing metal or something like that, it means it's very, very responsive. So you can hit your foot really fast and the beater's gonna move really fast with your foot. Sometimes the chain drive pedals aren't quite as precise, but even after I said all of that, I hate this pedal. I hate this pedal for a lot of reasons. I bought it used, I shouldn't have bought it. I won't even explain all the reasons I hate this pedal, but basically just because it's a direct drive doesn't make it an amazing pedal that I love. It's just a piece of metal that sits in my basement and I don't like it. It's very annoying to use. Okay, so whoops. So um, these are my two main bass drum pedals that I use, but I tend to prefer this one. And I'm going to go put it back on my bass drum. 
So before I grab the iPad and show you how to do things like make adjustments, I'm going to just explain the whole holes in my symbols thing, because I said that I would. Let me get this back on first. See how I'm lifting this up a little bit? That helps me um, clamp the pedal onto the hoop. Obviously, you want to be a little careful that you don't push it over, but that's not going to happen. So, okay. There we go. All right, it is in place. All right, so my symbols um, right now have holes in them because these are special low volume symbols, so it means they're quieter. Um, I use them when I teach lessons on FaceTime because if you have regular symbols and you know, I'm sitting here trying to teach somebody and I've got my phone set up here or whatever and I'm banging on regular symbols, they are so loud that it's not helpful sometimes for the lesson. So these symbols are very quiet and they don't mess up the microphone situation. Normally a symbol will not have holes in it. So for example, here is a normal ride symbol. I don't even know what kind this is, what brands, like who made it, there's no label which is very odd. I think there was a label down the bottom, but it's gone because it's very old. Okay, so normal symbols, no holes. If you have a normal symbol and it has a hole in it, get a refund because you paid too much. All right, so let me grab the iPad. I haven't done this before, meaning I don't know how this process will work, but let's try it. Okay. Here we go. All right, so on a hi-hat, check this out. See this? Here's a wing nut. I know, we talk about wing nuts a lot. They're very important. So this thing here loosens, and when it loosens, this top hi-hat comes off. Okay, I can pull it all the way off. So this piece of metal, there's also some plastic, I lied. That's the clutch. It is called a clutch. You need a clutch. There's no way to get around it. If you don't have a working clutch, you don't have a hi-hat. Okay, so I'm going to put the hi-hat top back on through the clutch. So I'm going to put this back on. Okay, you notice I didn't tighten the wing nut again. It's loosey-goosey. Okay, check this out. There's a pedal, my hi-hat pedal. When I move my foot, this pole goes up and down. Okay? That pole is connected to my pedal. If I want this top hi-hat to go up and down, I need to tighten this wing nut. Here's where it gets a little tricky. I have to control how much this opens. Okay? So this is open, loosey-goosey. I'm gonna put my left foot down on the pedal and I'm just going to push it down maybe like an inch, okay, just a bit. My foot's pushing down a little bit. Now I'm going to tighten this wing nut. Check this out, okay? So it goes up and down. Just enough that I can play like this. Open, closed. Watch what happens. Okay, loose, open, loosey-goosey. If I push this pedal all the way down to the floor, oh, I can't push it down anymore. Now I'm going to tighten this. Now look what happens. That opens way too much. Now I have to use my whole body and push my foot down all the way to open and close this. It's ridiculous. I would never do this when I'm playing my drum set. Don't do that to yourself, okay? So, loosey-goosey. Open, okay, it goes up and down. There's the pole, moving my foot. If I don't put my foot down at all, and now I tighten this, look what happens. I'm pushing, nothing's happening, it's not going up and down. That's because I basically locked it closed. I tighten the wing nut and the pole can't move at all. Okay, so I'm loosening it a little bit, putting my foot down just a little, tightening it. Perfect, now it moves up and down just a little bit. So you'll just have to play around with that and see how it feels. This first video actually ended up a lot closer to half an hour than I thought. I didn't think I had this much to talk about with the basics. So I'm going to make kind of a part two. I hope this has been useful. 
So I know the Girls Rock Campaign Boston is just now starting to offer these video lessons and tutorials to make sure that Girls Rock and music education is still helpful and accessible to people during this strange, strange time. Sorry, as I adjust my iPad there. The strange, strange time of um, COVID-19 and all of us having to stay home and stay safe. Um, but what you can do to help out on top of just watching is if you like this video, and if you subscribe to Girls Rock Campaign Boston's YouTube channel, you can go look them up other places online as well, and you can like them on Instagram and Facebook and follow their updates. Then you'll be able to know what's going on, and hopefully as soon as they're able to start having activities and events in person again, you'll know um, how to sign up and how to take part. Maybe you want to volunteer, maybe you have something musical to share, or you would just like to start learning, or maybe you also want to do one of the other important jobs at a future ladies rock or girls rock event such as helping with food or helping at the merch table because without those helpers and without those positions the whole thing would fall apart because you can have a million musicians and a million of te teachers and students but if you don't have anyone to feed you or sell your t-shirts you're out of luck okay so thanks for watching um stay tuned for part two i will talk about some other topics in that video and stay safe